Coming up on today's show, Bears general manager Ryan Poles tells all on quarterback Caleb Williams. Shout out to the Chicago Tribune for getting an interview with Poles. We're going to react to that here in just a moment. But listen, NFL Draft Week is officially here, ladies and gentlemen. If you are fired up, like this video. Let's make it happen. Draft Week is here four days until the first round of the NFL Draft. And until... Caleb Williams becomes a Chicago Bear. So hit that like button and let's dive into today's show. I'm Harrison Graham. Bears Now is sponsored by 8Sleep. Get the best sleeping product out there from 8Sleep. 8Sleep.com slash chat sports. Get $200 off the pod cover with that link, which is in the comments and in the description of this video. We'll tell you a little bit more about it later on in the show. Do you want to give credit to Dan Wiederer and the Chicago Tribune for getting some quotes from Ryan Poles? And by the way, I just kind of want to get this out there. Like, once again... I mean, Ryan Poles isn't even hiding the fact that they're drafting Caleb Williams. It is just kind of funny at this point. But let's get into it. I got some takeaways here I want to get to. Poles talks Williams. And I think one thing that really caught my attention is he kind of voiced that the adversity that Williams went through in 2023, not having the season he wanted to at USC, obviously he still played pretty well, but from a winning and losing standpoint, he thinks that could be used as a good thing and channeled properly moving forward in his playing career here's polls on that he said I think it's a positive it's something that's going to help him in the future he has really really high expectations of himself so when he talks about last year he wanted to win the Heisman back-to-back he wanted to play in the college football playoffs and win a championship that was his mindset so when that started to deteriorate that was really hard for him but what I have expressed to him and what he has expressed back is maybe that was the best thing for him and Look, Caleb's talked about that multiple times, how hard last year was for him. He said, look, I'm not used to going seven and five. Like, it wasn't easy. And, you know, it's kind of the more that's been discussed, the whole crying in the stands with his parents, et cetera. That was after USC's third loss of the season. So if you really look into context clues here, what does that mean? That eliminates any chance at making the college football playoff, especially in the four-team system that was still in place at the time. Uh, and so that team goal of winning a national championship ended that night. So when you look into context there, that really does uh, kind of paint a clearer picture there. Obviously, last year did not go to plan. He didn't make the college football playoffs. USC didn't. He didn't uh, repeat as a Heisman winner or even – uh, get invited as a finalist. Obviously, not what he envisioned after his awesome 2022 season. Now, when you compare the two years, it's not like Caleb Williams' play fell off a cliff. He still played pretty damn well. I mean, 69%, which actually went up. Nice. Still threw for a bunch of yards. 30 to 5 touchdown interception ratio. Like, he still did a lot of really, really good things. But you could probably say, yeah, he probably didn't play quite as well as he played in 2022. Now, I think there's a lot of context there. He didn't have Jordan Addison. The offensive line kind of collapsed. There's a lot of reasons for that. He chased big hero plays too much because the defense really struggled. But, yeah, the point is, is 2023 was not, you know, what he envisioned and what USC probably planned after that really good year in 2022. Now, Caleb Williams said this recently as well on – what his head coach at the time, Lincoln Riley, kind of sat down with him and said, look, you either grow from something like this or keep feeling this feeling and you'll stay where you are. And, yeah, I mean, you got to move forward, right? you got to take it for what it is and use it as a positive, which is what Ryan Poles uh, was talking about and what apparently he and Caleb talked about together. Like, hey, like this could actually end up being a good thing. And I do like that Caleb has acknowledged, like, hey, last year did not go as I wanted to. I was hurt by it. We had a lot of goals. We didn't reach those goals. I think he'll learn from that. Um, and if he does, then that can be a good thing. And I think that's why he tweeted out in response to Greg McElroy or whoever it was about, oh, he's never faced adversity. It's just not true. Last year was a challenging year for him, especially considering all the success he has had up to that point. All right, number two here. Cool under pressure. Direct quote from Ryan Poles when talking about Mr. Williams. Uh, he raved about Caleb's uh, just kind of calmness in tight pressure situations. I know producer Coop's going to have to close his ears here because he is a big-time Texas fan, but something he pointed to was 
really his first ever legitimate college action when he was at Oklahoma uh, and having to engineer an epic comeback against Texas. He enters the game down 28-7 to on a fourth and one, a critical fourth and one. First play, what does he do? 66-yard touchdown where he makes a couple guys miss and goes off to the races. Just a wild play. They still are down 38-20 to after that. They rally to a 55-48 to win due to Caleb Williams' magic. I mean, he made throw after throw, run after run, throws for 212, rushes for 88, uh, despite playing about only two and a half quarters. He was absolutely fantastic. And you have to remember, this was an 18-year-old kid who didn't play his senior year of high school due to COVID. His season got wiped out, and he enters against his arch-rival Texas down 28-7 to in his first real game of college football and pulls that off. I mean, that is that is staying cool under pressure, uh, if you ask me. And here's Poles talking about just that. It was just, hey, we need to make you, you to make plays. Now can you play free? And in that game and on that stage capitalize, you're always looking for that low heart rate, and Caleb just doesn't get all amped up and make mistakes. I just like his cool under pressure in those big moments. And that phrase, cool under pressure, that's where the great ones separate, right? Like there's a lot of good NFL quarterbacks that – put up yards and win games and, you know, do a lot of really good things in this league. But the great ones rise up in big games and in two-minute drill situations, et cetera. So, um, you know, he clearly believes in Williams' ability to do that uh, coming into the NFL. More to discuss from this interview that uh, the Tribune did. Again, credit to Dan Weederer there uh, as I'm reacting here. Go check out the article if you haven't. I'll link it in the description of this video. Eight Sleep, today's sponsor of Chicago Bears Now. It's the high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues. The Pod 3 cover from Eight Sleep slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling technology that helps you, keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. I picked up my Pod 3 cover from Eight Sleep at the start of the new year, and I've never slept better. Sleep science shows that in order to sleep our best, our body temperature needs to drop in the early and middle part of sleep and rise in the morning. The pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet and allows you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. Not only does it keep you at the perfect temp all night, it also tracks your sleep and health metrics. On average, users sleep their see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just one month on the pod. So get going here as we enter the summer with the 8 Sleep Pod 3 cover. Go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports. Get $200 off plus free shipping. Hell of a deal there. That's 8sleep.com slash chat sports to get $200 off. Link is in the comments and in the description. Start sleeping better than ever with 8 Sleep. Okay, obviously Ryan Poles loves Cale Williams' physical ability, his arm talent. I mean, this is something he even said way back at the NFL Combine when asked about comparisons to Patrick Mahomes, and he started talking about, like, the different arm angles he can use and how uh, a lot of that stuff is similar. Here's Poles here again saying, if you really watch the tape, you're drawn to the ability to change ball speed with accuracy. You'll see a lot of guys who are high-velocity, high-speed throwers, but you love those guys who have the ability to demonstrate feel, have touch, and show loft. He changes speeds, uses his anticipation. Those are the kind of things I don't think many people study or see that I think are really impressive. And as someone who's probably watched 25 of his college games uh, in real time and has gone back and rewatched a few of them, there's not a throw he can't make. You want the fastball, a little 20-yard in route, he can make it. Does it over and over again. You need the sidearm flick on some quick screens or slants, he can do that. You want him to layer footballs over linebackers and in front of safeties, he's done it. Um, you want him to throw a 65-yard Hail Mary back in high school on the last play of the game to win a uh, championship, he's done that as well. Like, there's nothing he can't do with his arm talent. So when you have that part of it to begin with, that's uh, you're going to have a step up on guys who simply just can't do some of those things. Now, speaking of the NFL draft, we're going to be live for day one. Day two and day three as well. But day one here on Thursday as uh, the Bears will select Caleb Williams, and we'll see what they do with the number nine overall pick. Ryan Pohl is going to be wheeling and dealing. We'll see what he's got up his sleeve. But we'll be live for all of it, so be sure to subscribe and join us. It should be a hell of a Thursday night. Pohl's also talked about the confidence he is in what the Bears have done to set up Caleb Williams. Uh, here's what he had to say on that. 
when you look at the history of the last two quarterbacks here, usually it's about the supporting cast and it's about putting guys in a position to be successful. I think Caleb knows both verbally and by action that I really value that and understand that part of it. And yeah, actions do speak louder than words, like bringing in a DJ Moore last year and a Keenan Allen this year. I'd say that's action. Signing DeAndre Swift, um, committing money to Cole Komet. You bring in Gerald Everett. Uh, you've got young, talented offensive linemen that still need to add there, obviously. you got a good defense in place, which Caleb Williams brought up on his own all the way back at the NFL Combine. Bears have another top 10 pick. They revamped their offensive staff. The point is, is even though it's not perfect, Caleb is in a better situation based on personnel than what Mitch and certainly Justin walked into when they got drafted by the Bears. I mean, especially in Justin's case, like, when you really look back at it and when you really think about it, the Bears should not have drafted him because they just didn't have the infrastructure to help him grow. Um, I'm glad they drafted him. I wanted him to be here and I wanted him to be the guy, but the Bears just, they had an aging roster. They had to give up assets to move up and get them. Then they fired that regime. The new regime had to tear it down. We've said it a million times, but the point is, is this time they've set up the quarterback to hit the ground running right away, which is really, really fun to think about. And then lastly, and this is something Polls talked about way back in January when he was saying, you know, asked about are they going to keep Justin? Are they going to move on? It's like, well, I got to find out about the wiring of these prospects and if they're, you know, wired the right way, if they can lead. And obviously he believes in Caleb's wiring. Um, he had this to say. He said, Williams lives in Hollywood right now. He's only been there two years and he has some really cool things going on. Took advantage of NIL to set him up business-wise and he's going to do well in his life because of it. But... He's very low-key. He's not a spotlight guy. He tries to move under the radar, and I don't really think uh, he needs the flashy lights to feed off of in order to be successful. He's very focused, low-key, down-to-earth, more than I think he is portrayed. Williams said on the Pivot podcast with Ryan Clark, I don't go out much because they talked about the change going from Norman to Hollywood, and he was like, look, I, you know, I, I'm the same guy. I keep it low profile, etc." cetera. Um, you know, and... Obviously, actions speak louder than words, but it's not like you saw a lot of TMZ cameras the last two years, uh, you know, picking uh, uh, picking up Caleb Williams stumbling out of a nightclub at 3 a.m. or something like that. So, you know, take take words for what they are. But uh, this guy just seems dialed into me. I mean, this is his screensaver uh, of his phone that he showed Ryan Clark, and this is a guy who's had the goal of being the number one pick there. Su eight Super Bowls is what he's striving for. Whether that's realistic or not, we'll find out. But his focus is on football. The guy wants to be great. Not just great, the greatest. I mean, you don't put eight Super Bowls on your phone unless you want to be the greatest of all time because Tom Brady's got seven of them. So, um, you know, I want a quarterback that's going to be confident, that's going to set the bar extraordinarily high, whether he reaches it or not. That obviously remains to be seen. But I think the Bears have done a nice job of getting ready for this. And I think – Caleb has the right wiring and mindset and obviously ability to potentially get there. Uh, it'll be fun. Hell, if the guy wins one Super Bowl, he's going to be a legend in Chicago, much less if he wins multiple. Do you believe in Caleb Williams and his ability? Type B for believe or D for don't. I believe in his talent. Um, you know, we haven't seen him play an NFL game yet, NFL snap, so it's, a bit of, it's obviously a projection, but uh, let me know in the comments, B for believe or D for don't. And be sure to hit the subscribe button. We're going to have you covered all week long leading up to Thursday's draft. And again, we'll be live for all seven rounds of the draft. Even if the Bears don't pick beyond round four, we're going to be live just in case if they do. Subscribe, turn on the notifications, bear down.